Today I'm back with my Innocenti Spider. In the last video, I did get the engine to run, but it did have a lot of issues. Today, hopefully at the end of this video, we'll have the car running on its own. Let's take a look at what I got. I'm not necessarily going to get through all of these things today, but I did order a carb rebuild kit, a new distributor cap, and all these parts did come from Moss Motors. A lot of people ask me where I get my parts from. And I did order a new SU fuel pump. This car probably would have had an Italian fuel pump on it, but I'm just going to put on this SU fuel pump because it's an easy solution. And I have a few smaller parts. I got a new point set, a new condenser, and a new rotor. The first place I'm going to start is by replacing the points and condenser. So I need to get this distributor cap out of here. And I'll remove the rotor. We can see the condenser right here. Looks like someone has already added a new wire here that connects the power feed coming from the coil over to the points. And then the points are located down here. So I'll need to remove the wires from the points, the one that brings in the power from the coil, as well as the one that goes to the condenser. And then I can remove the points from the distributor as well as the condenser. There's a lot of little parts here, so you need to be careful not to drop them inside the distributor. So we had a nut, and then there was an insulator on the top of that. And that insulator has a little bit of a plug that insulated this wire coming from the coil. And then we have the end of the points. And then we have our wire that goes to the condenser and the other end of the insulated plug there. So you can see everything is isolated from the post that actually grounds everything to the distributor. Again, I have to be really careful with these little screws so I don't drop them. With that screw removed, the point should just slide right out. They've been on there a long time. There we go. And then there's a tiny Phillips screw that holds the condenser on. Luckily my screwdriver is magnetic there. And then we can pull out the condenser. Here's our new condenser. I'm going to stick the screw through it before I get it down there. That'll be the easiest way to keep the screw from getting lost. Here's the new points and these are called points because you have two points of metal touching each other. This surface will end up touching this surface right here. So I can slip on my bottom plate. Now I can put the adjusting screw through it. I'll just leave it loose for right now so that this plate can still move. I can connect up my wire that goes to the condenser. And then next would be the other half of the points. There we go. Next will go our power from our coil. And then I'll slip on a little insulator and then on our nut. Now the engine needs to be turned over until this part of the points right here is sitting on one of the lobes, which is going to push this little tooth right here out. So we want this position to line up with this position. 
And I'll do that by putting the car in gear and then pushing it, which will turn the engine slightly, lining these up. Now with the car in gear, I can push on the fender here and watch the points and I'll know when it's in the right position. Okay, right there, the little tooth on the point is lined up with one of the lobes, meaning that the points are going to be pushed out in their outermost position. I'm going to tighten the screw up just a little bit more so that this plate isn't just moving around real freely. Now I'm going to take my 015 feeler gauge and stick it in here and set that contact gap to 0.015. Okay, I like this position. Now I can tighten this screw up. Now we'll put on a brand new rotor. And I'm also going to put on a new distributor cap. This one is top loading instead of the side loading distributor cap that was on here before. These caps are a lot easier to deal with, and when I'm working on a sprite or a midget, I like to change the cap over to a top loading, unless it's a Concord restoration. So I'll just slip this new cap on here first, before I transfer any of the wires. I did find a wire set sitting around because I forgot to order a set. So I'm going to install a new set of wires as well. So if we look at this cap here, this one right here is number one, which is going to be this position right here. Next one is three. Next one is four. And then we have two. There's four, and then two. Looks like somehow the connector inside this one got turned 90 degrees from the way it should be. There we go. Now with all the spark plug wires hooked up, we just need to connect up our coil wire. Now we just changed a bunch of things. So before going forward too far, I want to test this. But before I do that, I also need to bolt back on the Italian Magneti Morelli generator. I do have the wires hooked up, but it's actually not bolted into place and the belt is not on it yet. So I need to bolt this back up into its brackets. The generator is installed again, but the tachometer on this car runs off of the back of the generator, so I need to plug this in. This just screws into the back of the generator and it gets turned. And from the rotation of the generator, the tachometer knows how fast the engine is spinning. Now let's connect the spark tester back up and make sure that our ignition still works. If our ignition still works, when I crank it over, we should see a spark right here. I'm using my jump start box again. Let's try it out. I don't know if you could see it, but I saw a pronounced spark right here. I'll turn the lights off so that you can see it a little better. Okay, it's a little darker. Let's try this again. You should have been able to see the orange flashes here now. It actually sounded like it wanted to start a couple times. Now that we have refreshed the ignition system, I do have that new fuel pump that would go right here, but I don't think it makes any sense in making the fuel pump work right now because this carburetor was leaking fuel last time we were running the engine. 
So until I rebuild the carburetors, it doesn't make any sense to put pressurized fuel to the carburetors because it's just going to leak all over the place and make a mess. So getting these carburetors off and rebuilding them will be the next task, and we'll do that next time. So if you want to see more videos with my Innocenti S, comment below and click subscribe.